Hello and welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to take you through an introduction to smart notes that's going to be using Obsidian and what this whole Zettelkasten method is all about. So let's dive right into it. I've got an outline here of how we're going to approach this video. So we have, we're going to first go through what are smart notes? What are the benefits of smart notes? We're going to talk about Obsidian. What is it? How do you get hold of it? Uh, I'm going to introduce note taking in Obsidian for you. And I'm going to then start talking about smart notes and the, and the Zettelkasten method of how we bring that into Obsidian and how you should think about that. We'll run through an example and we'll conclude it um, and talk about where to go next and how to continue this smart notes journey of yours. So let's kick off. Benefits. What are smart notes? It's a knowledge management system that helps keep your ideas small, helps you uh, easily add to them, helps you modify them. And the whole principle is based around being able to interlink your ideas together. Um, so it's, it's about connected thought. So Obsidian uh, really talk about the second brain. So using it for that, Rome Research is for connected thinking. And other tools as well are sort of branching into this. Uh, full disclosure, I am building my own Zettelkasten note-taking app, which is what you're seeing here on screen, called Flotelic. Link's in the description. Do check it out. Do join the journey. Uh, but today, we're going to focus on Obsidian and really kind of use what's ready today and how you can get the most out of that. So it, Zettelkasten comes, it's a, it's a German word for slip box, and it was uh, devised by a, a gentleman called Nicholas Luhmann. Uh, he's a 20th century German psychologist who used this slip box method that he devised to organize all his notes together. Uh, it was so effective that throughout his lifetime and body of work, he had about 90,000 notes. These are just index cards all organized. He had a numbering system. He had an organization system, things like index cards to find things. Um, and uh, the fascinating thing is he managed to produce um, a phenomenal amount of work out of this, even to the point that even after his death, other people were able to use that knowledge system and continue his work, his ideas and his thoughts. But let's just dive in very briefly and say, what does it consist of? Um, it consists of uh, permanent notes, fleeting notes, and uh, literature notes. So if you're reading a book, you create a literature note, you're making notes on that, taking quotes. Fleeting notes are you have an idea, you just want to capture that idea, you um, want to flesh that out a bit later, but your permanent notes is what we call the second brain. That's the slip box. And the idea is that you have these index cards, and each one represents uh, one core idea. And the reason for that is that you can take that card and you can reuse it. You can link other things. Um, it should be easy to understand in isolation. And when you have that and you can link it to other things, that's where the magic comes in. That's where you find insights, questions, arguments, counter arguments. And really, it models the way the human brain uh, stores facts and understanding and memories. Essentially, it's an interconnection of things together. So one idea, another idea, and it's the relationship of those two ideas that is really impactful. The beautiful thing about the slip box, the Zettelkast and smart notes is that you're not categorizing your ideas into rigid uh, segments of topics. You're letting them live and be free forming to the point that you can link completely different ideas together and form a new insight and a new understanding. Uh, for example, if you're a nutritionist and you've got a passion of uh, an interest in psychology, the two in isolation will only give you a certain amount of answers, but reality is it's the connection between them. How does diet affect psychology? How does that psychology affect decisions about diet and nutrition? So having them as isolated pieces of content ideas but linking them in certain ways is really powerful that's what smart notes are so what are the benefits to you if you want to take this smart note journey so really uh you can do your thinking in a smart note system now 
stop for a moment and consider this. If I have all my ideas and I'm documenting my ideas, it's rigid, it's set in stone. I'm essentially carbon copying what's in my head on paper so I can reference it, recall it, all of that. But what if your note system allowed you to form those ideas, form that understanding by being a collection of small, concise, digestible piece of information and being able to bring them together in one bigger picture. That's what we call by the second brain. It's it's how your brain works, it's how your brain thinks and it's doing that. So you no longer have to remember everything. You just have to take two things, join them together and gain that understanding. And when you're learning, when you're understanding, it's really like the question is almost more important than the answer. Knowing what question to ask is really powerful. And this helps you be able to pull your existing knowledge in very easily because they're just small notes. They're not big chapter books of, of detail with the one insight that relates. They're small, concise. You bring that in and then you can start seeing the gaps and you can say, okay, what, what literature, what research, what, what videos do I now need to, to watch, read, consider to fill in the gaps of my understanding? So the question shows where your thinking is, is hitting that uh, the gap that you want to now fill. So essentially, yeah, you can have this note system and you can start asking it questions because you have an understanding in there and the question will either be answered by your understanding or it will highlight where more research is needed. And um, when you form a traditional note-taking method, generally you would have an idea and you'd be putting in things that justify support that idea. But the great thing about a second brain or a Zettelkasten is that you can very easily introduce these opposing arguments to it. So if you're talking about economics and you're supporting one argument about why a certain policy is, is good, you are allowed to bring in the ones why it's not. You're not, you're not saying what's good or bad, you're building an understanding and you're, you're essentially uh, trying to come up with the final hypothesis which is your insight, which is unique to you. You read all these other things and this system helps you bring that new understanding to light. And the really powerful thing, the bit that I'm personally excited by, is that understanding comes through creation as well. If you only ever read other people's work, you will only be able to regurgitate, quote, mimic what they say. And it's... Uh, it's an easy trap when you're when you're just new because your 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 body of input is very limited. But as you start building up wider sources of information, then you get to form your own ideas. But to fulfill that understanding, you need to be able to express those ideas. And writing is one of the core uh, benefits of a Zettelkasten is that you get to take those notes and write your new ideas, your new notes, and very much so being able to publish your own work is a really good uh, way to exercise your thinking and uh, use those notes and test your ideas and find the holes in the ideas, get the feedback and you know feedback from other people is really powerful as well. So those are the benefits. So boiling that down, if you want to be a better blogger, maybe you want to write a book, maybe you want to do more YouTube, these are things that are in my uh, my goal list that I want to do, then being able to have this Zettelkast and smart note system and start producing content that has access to all that insight and knowledge without me having to have that fear of a blank sheet of paper to start all over. Um, so yeah, just recapping on Nicholas Lumen, the benefits to him is he had over 90,000 notes during his lifetime. One of, the, one of the things he said is producing that was not work for him. He would go home, he would read, and he would just organize as he went. The, the benefit is that that 90,000 was just the product of doing a small amount every day of things he was interested in. And I think that's something really powerful to all of us. If you have the right system, you can just do a little bit every day. And just to recap on the product I'm building, that 
little bit every day is going to be core to the product, uh, which uh, we won't see in Obsidian. Obsidian is a product specifically around creating the links and the notes, uh, but it doesn't help you um, build the habit and build that body of work over time. So that's where there's a, a bit of a differentiator. So he published over 70 books and 400 scholarly articles, which is impressive over someone's lifetime. And uh, as I said earlier, his slip box was used to produce new work, new insights after his death. So if I haven't sold you on the benefits, then uh, it should be obvious that if you, if you want to gain more understanding, have less um, work when you want to produce high quality content and let this thing grow organically, like it's pure upside if you put this into place. Okay, so let's talk about Obsidian. What is Obsidian? Uh, other than I think it's a rare element, um, but Obsidian is a markdown personal knowledge management system that is geared towards the second brain. If you look at the homepage, it says second brain on there, uh, where you get to link your notes with backlinks. So backlinks is a big hot topic now in note taking. Notion have been adding backlinks. Um, many other apps, Rome Research is really hot on their backlinks and links. Uh, we'll show why that's really useful um, uh, because the whole connected thinking and being able to visualize that, we'll show you that in Obsidian in a moment. Um, in terms of the product itself, it's a desktop app. It's free for personal use, uh, but if you are going to use it for business, they do have a per user per year license for that. Okay, so that is what Obsidian is. And let's say, where do we get Obsidian from? So it can be downloaded from obsidian.md. So no doubt the MD stands for Markdown, which is their primary way of um, uh, doing the editing. So Obsidian homepage here, a second, uh, a second brain for you forever. Now, what they mean by for you forever, they're a desktop app that all the files are stored on your computer. So they mean it's your files, not cloud hosted files. And forever means that if ever they went away, You've still got your files. So what they're referring to there is, um, unlike some of the hosted platforms, th this stuff is yours and download links. I think they're technically in beta. So um, watch the space to see where that goes. I think they're introducing a multi-device sync uh, option or have introduced it. Uh, they don't have mobile apps yet. So they're in the, the growth trajectory of their application. Okay, uh, where were we? So here's Obsidian. Um, so it's a text editor. Uh, you have a way to uh, quickly switch between um, things here. You've got a graph here. I'll show you that in a moment. Uh, you can import things. So notes and uh, folders, and you can change sort order. So uh, standard stuff. And down here we have backlinks, words, characters. So if you're editing. So I've imported my second brain from Flotelic just to get a feel for it. Um, uh, my second brain sort of a lot of placeholders in there. Uh, I'm going to be building that out as I get my workflow features into Flotelic. But how do you get started? Um, first of all, they want you to create a vault. So uh, if I just open up this, sorry, it's gone on the other window. I did move it across, but it doesn't want to remember that. Okay, so vaults are essentially a workspace, a folder of your note collection which is great. You can open an existing one. And the cool thing about this is you can map it to a Google Drive folder, a Dropbox folder. You can back it up to Git if you're technical. Uh, so you get this, you get some synchronization benefits if you're using a, sort of like a cloud sync and you're just editing files. You can also create a new one. So let's go through this exercise now. Um, O-B-S-I-D, call it Obsidian Demo. Um, I, I'll probably just stick that in my documents there. That's fine. Hit create. And what that has done uh, is opened it up in a completely different window here. So just bear with me one second. I'm going to close this one down. Um, this is one of the things I don't like about Obsidian is when you work with multiple vaults, it's really hard to uh, quickly switch into the world, especially on a Mac, maybe on a Windows, where the window management is slightly more improved or different. Um, okay, 
Right, so here's, here's a vault. And so I can create a new file. By default, you give it a name, name. Uh, so let's call this uh, the golden circle. We'll be, we'll be running through this as an example. And use markdown, so hash is a title. If I want to do a bullet point, uh, I think I'll do a bullet point. I don't know, maybe not. Um, bold. So if you're familiar with Markdown, just look it up. It, it, it's quite basic in terms of the uh, things you have to remember, which is cool. Um, and then you can preview that as a, another window. Where's it gone? All right, so I'm in preview mode now. You can split the windows, I believe. Uh, I think I have to do a split. This is where split vertically, I I assume like that would be down there, but uh, sometimes it's confusing depending on the app. So I could have an edit mode and a read only mode here. So uh, this is a markdown note. Okay, right, hit, that's the, the basic premise. What, so one of the cool things about Obsidian, rather than just any other note-taking app, is your ability to link them. So let's say the golden circle, and let's say uh, by, and it's Simon Senek is the, the person who con conceived of this. But let's say I do a double square bracket. So this is a special type of link, which is an internal link, which is what we talk about, connected thinking. Uh, so if I put his name there, for example, now what I can do, I can command click on that and I'll create that. So, so details about Simon. So this means now whenever I want to refer to Simon Senek and his body of work, I can get that in the backlink. So I can see, okay, what have we covered here? If I just close the preview there, what have we covered there? Okay, uh, part of the golden circle. So we can see those backlinks in play. Uh, we'll cover more about the, the example in a, in a moment and we'll flesh this out with a real, real example so you get to see the difference between note taking in its entirety versus the second brain Zettelkasten way of doing things. Because uh, if you're new to it, it's actually, it is tricky to know how to do it. There's a Reddit group which helps you with that. There's some blog articles on YouTube. Um, I'll cover where to go next with that. Okay, so uh, where is my work? Here we go. Okay. So that's really the introduction to Obsidian, where to get it from. Uh, I've covered how to create vaults, how to edit Markdown, and very briefly how to link things together. So now let's dive into smart notes. So this is where we're going to take the concept of the Zettelkasten and smart notes and really dive into it. So it has uh, a set of principles um, and I'll just explain these now. So smart notes are where the writing uh, is not the outcome of thinking, but is the thinking taking place? And this is what I said before, rather than do my thinking and write down my thoughts, this is, I don't know the conclusion of this. I don't know where this is going. I'm going to use the writing to to create that thinking. Um, just to plug my own product here, Flotelic, this is something I found really interesting that I wasn't expecting as I was building it, is it's a great way to quickly lay out your thoughts, put the placeholder content. This video here was done entirely in that way. I just specced out the areas, and then over the course of the week, I would just drop in the content that I wanted to promote into this video, and it, it made it less intimidating uh, and more um, organic as to how I build up that content. So you do your thinking inside uh, your note taking and it focuses on writing. So this is where you're producing content that is um, to consolidate, test and validate your thinking. So you have an idea and now you're bringing in other ideas to either validate it or show that it's got flaws in your ideas that you're disproving that idea um, with a body of smart notes so with your collection of smart notes you never start from scratch as you always have access to your thinking you have access to your insights and you have access to all those records at your fingertip the most intimidating thing when you're writing something new 
is to go to a new Word document, new Google Doc or whatever, and you see that blank sheet of paper. And you're looking at it and you're thinking, I've, I, I've got to organize everything, but with a Zettel casting, all you do is say, right, what have I understood already and how do I bring that in? You just focus on the small bits and the big picture kind of forms itself. If it, What do they call it? Emergent knowledge or some emergent um, note-taking or something along those lines. So you can build a workflow around capturing your idea. So we, an idea, like it's, we call it a fleeting note. In other words, it's a temporary, I capture it. You can use other apps um, to capture that. There's a draft app, the drafts app where you can do a voice to note. So if you listen to an audio book and you just want, you have an idea, um, or you're just out and about, shower thoughts, right? They're a great source of ideas if you can capture those as fleeting notes. Literature notes, so you're reading a book, whether that's Kindle, whether that's a physical book or any other any other method. Um, I refer to that study notes because when this was devised, um, things like YouTube and online courses weren't really a thing for learning. It was all reading, uh, but also blog posts as well. Um, I I keep in Flotelic, I keep my collection of articles that I want to want to read. Um, so like uh, 50 ideas and the ideas of, I can read this in my backlog and add my notes here. So uh, yeah, uh, let's switch back. So by using a, a system, it's a standard way of working, which lifts the burden of having to think. When you have an idea, when you have a new, a new note to take, the cognitive barrier to figure out where to put it can actually slow your thinking down. And when you're adapting your system as you go because of different use cases, that slows your thinking down. Inconsistency slows your thinking down. So using a Zettelkast and smart note system, I use that interchangeably. It's it removes the burden because it's it's a simple system. Once you get into the flow of it, you just use it, and you want to really just focus on the contents of the notes, not the organization of the notes. You can tell how I've designed Flotelic that um, it's very much notes first, not uh, categorization first. So you want to get your ideas. You want to go into the flow, hence the flow part of Flotelic. Uh, your work and knowledge grows over time as you make more connections and you can update that easily as you go. And I think I've covered that. It's the connected thinking. Small amounts every day compounds over time. You can work on multiple projects at the same time. Now, this one is really interesting. Um, if you think I'm going to write a blog post, so therefore I need to research the content, I need to write my draft, I need to edit it, and then I publish it. And then next week you start all over again. So that is really uh, hard work, especially if you're doing like YouTube videos and you start, da, 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 end. The idea with this is that you can work on multiple projects at a time. You're just gradually painting in the detail as you go. Because your body of work is the same body of work, sorry, because your body of knowledge, your second brain, is the same and it grows and grows and grows. And you create these projects. So like, I'm going to write an article about uh, the Zettelkasten method, right? So I can pull on those ideas. Those ideas already exist. I don't have to write them from scratch. And then I can adapt and I can reuse parts of one article or notes that I've used in one article. I can reuse them. And as you start laying out your projects, you can just organically just add to them at the same time. You don't have to start one and then finish it before we can move on to the next. You could have 10, 20, 30 projects on the go. And the idea here is it's like popcorn. They're all cooking at the same time, but they pop at different times. And as they pop, that's when you start publishing and they become ready. And you know, there'll be an activity of getting it over the line, doing the editing and the funnel and you know the polish. But you want to get this regular popping. So at the very beginning, it's going to feel like really slow work. And then eventually you're going to get this stream. And, and when it works, when it all comes together, you should be able to publish consistently. And again, with my Flotelic app, this is what I'm trying to do is to help you create those streamlined projects so that as they start popping, you get that feeling of consistent uh, output, essentially. Um, you can organize by context um, or oh, so you organize by context uh, and not by note 
uh, sorry, not by topic. So context is more important than topic because topics are like folders on a file system. If I'm talking about nutrition and I'm talking about psychology and I've got those separated, how do you talk about the effect of nutrition and psychology? Context is really important. So that's why you don't have this concept of um, rigid folder structures, rigid organization, rigid topics. Keep it fluid and the links are what brings the context together. So, um, and curiosity of what to ask. The most, I think the most important thing in any knowledge management system is, is having a curious question. Being able to ask a question that is novel, unique, uh, extends your knowledge, knowing the questions to ask. And with a smart note system, a Zettelkasten system, you get the opportunity to ask questions and pull in, link in the notes. So what I would literally do, I would create in my second brain, in my notes, I would I would create a question. Um, I'd say, oh, I, you know, does nutrition um, impact mood, for example, right? Okay, that's touching. That would be my question. And then I'd start linking in um, any topics that I want to bring into that discussion and conclude it and find out what am I missing. So uh, I do apologize. I'm not supposed to be showing my app. Um, I'm going to be showing Obsidian. Um, so that's what I mean by curiosity it helps you discover uh, things out of there. You can create new paths of insight and ideas um, and you it allows you to connect everything in a non-linear way. You don't have to start at the top and you know go through things in a rigid way. You don't have to always boil down to the most early, you know, introductory part of it to, to talk about something. You can just go straight to the insight and fill in the gaps, almost like from the middle out even, uh, rather than from the top down. And uh, you get to explore the contradictory ideas as well, rather than just having to exclude them because they don't fit your mental model. Um, uh, I'll give you an example. I I love the whole uh, keto uh, way of approaching things because I understand how it affects you know, the uh, the hormones, the body. Um, I understand all of that, but there's a question like, is it is it the right way? And I want to answer that rather than believing it's the right way and only supporting that as the argument. The truth needs to be discovered, not the truth needs to be. Um, molded to your mental model and that's really important and really should be really easy to do in a in a smart note system okay right moving on what is the zettelkasten method okay so we've spoken about this zettelkasten is german for slip box it's the filing cabinet of index cards uh, you'll notice that i've tried to keep the index card feel so that you're 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 trying to keep your notes light. Um, and it's a system of organizing these notes in a, such a way that uh, each idea is small enough that it fits on a four by six index card. And those cards can be useful in isolation. So I could take this card and that card. I should be able to understand them without needing to know its neighboring cards, right? And um, then you want to build links of them together. If you're doing a paper-based system, if you're doing that, then you need to have a numbering system and the Zettelkasten method does recommend a numbering system. I think it's to do with a date and then and an index with like one A. If it, if you're trying to insert, it's a it's an interesting problem when you're on a physical system. Like how do you insert something and, and then have a contiguous numbering system? But I'm mostly talking about digital note taking solutions. So the physical organization and numbering is less important. Um, Obsidian does have a plugin that you can turn on. Uh, an add-on that you can turn on that does like a Zettelkasten numbering system for your file names. Uh, I personally don't use it. I like to use the topic, uh, so the, the the question or the thing as the file name, and then use the internal links. And then uh, you can digitally link notes together. Um, and the standard way, really, that most products are doing, if you're using Rome, if you're using Cydian, if you're using Votelic, then it's a double square bracket. Uh, Markdown itself you, normally uses the um, 
like if you were to do a link like that and as you put it in brackets for example uh, and then when you'd render that it would put the label over the link um, but the double square bracket means there's no url it's an internal sort of knowledge system link so that's what we're really talking about is the zettelkasten um it's it's a it's a specialized version if you're going to use index cards but we're sort of adapting that to a digital world okay so when do you use smart notes because there are notes and there are notes uh, so where does smart notes fit in like if you're using apple notes or whatever like is that a smart note so the question really should be answered with use it if you want to create a second brain you want to create something that has connected thought and you want to extend your learning and uh, create a body of work out of it so to learn think through writing basically um, it is fantastic if you want to be a writer or you are a writer who wants to explore new ideas and insights so anybody blogging students uh, professionals authors it's a fantastic way of uh, reducing the burden of having to remember everything and have a system that does your thinking that you can do your thinking in and uh, it's great if you want to capture your knowledge from studying in a way that is highly discoverable and high, highly reusable so um I'm a techie, so uh, I've been doing DevOps and uh, web programming, and I've started using this technique to capture my learning there. So a thing gets, it's a nice, small, incremental piece of understanding. I can get it in isolation, connect it together, and then you can start seeing patterns between two different tech products, for example, and building up your knowledge there. So uh, that's just one example, but you could be studying biology, psychology, you could be studying almost anything, and you could use this method uh, to, to organize your knowledge. Okay. Let's, well, I've pretty much covered the overview of smart notes, it's fleeting notes, quick ideas, thoughts, and things of interest, literature notes, so taken from reading literature and, and captures thoughts and ideas that are sparked from that text. So just to dive on that, if I'm, say, reading a book on the Kindle app, and I highlight a passage, don't just highlight the passage and collect and collect quotes from the book that's not really useful because it's why you highlighted it at that moment in time what were you thinking that made you feel that was important to capture so what i often do is on my phone i'll be reading a kindle book uh, or my tablet i'll highlight and then i'll use the swipe keyboard on the phone because it's really quick to capture an idea and sometimes my idea is unrelated to the note it's just created a trigger point for me to think of that that gets put up into into the kindle app and uh right now i'm using um readwise to synchronize that to my notion but eventually i'm going to figure out how to get my kindle notes into flotelic and that's what i'm going to be using um to to go through that and then permanent notes so permanent notes is your slip box it's those index cards organized linked and all of that we call those permanent notes because now they're sort of settled in final thought you you've you've gone through that process of thinking it through it doesn't mean you can't change it and you can, you can add and remove and edit of course as your as your thinking gets updated and improves but the idea is that um you should be able to use that in a in a as though it's finished in that sense okay so We've covered that. Let's go into an example, golden circle. So here is an example where I've got this YouTube video from Simon Sinek. He gave a TED talk. This is a five minute version of that where he talks about a thing called the golden circle. And I've watched the video and I've just made some very quick notes about this um, to get some understanding of that. And he talks about the why, the how, the what. Um, every person knows uh, what they do uh, some know how they do it. So he's talking about um, how people position, like businesses position. Um, so every person in an organization knows what they do. Some know how they do it. Um, and that could be their unique selling point. They're, they do it more efficiently. They do it more cost effective. But very few people know uh, why they do what they do. And if the answer is, well, to make profit, that's not quite right. I, I did a, uh, a UX consultancy to a, to a firm and I was trying to go through an experiment. I said, why are you in business? Uh, you know, what is it that you're here for? And the CEO looked at me and he said, to make money. 
And I thought, well, that would be a really fantastic thing to put on your homepage right now. You know, we're here because we want to make money. Um, and that's not really helpful because you're serving your customer, but not many companies understand that. It's a great video. You should, you should watch it. But anyway, I won't go into too much detail. I could go into a lot of detail because I love this stuff. But what we're going to do is we're going to start. I'm going to show you how I will approach this in Obsidian with my, uh, yeah, with my note taking. So I'm going to bring this out and I'm going to refer to it. But um, because of the screen recording, I have very little real estate to have them side by side. Uh, so, OK, here we are. Right, so we've got the golden circle. Um, we want to start with, you know, it's the, uh, normally I, I could probably put in a picture, for example, uh, but uh, why, uh, how, and what. Uh, right, so um, I would probably then say, so, Companies uh, get the priority. I'm going to, he refers to a circle because I'm just using text. Let's get rid of that for a second. Um, in the wrong order. They know what they do. They know how they do it. But they don't often know why they do it. Okay, right, so this is an, an element. What he goes on to is uh, he talks about um, like purpose. So we want to kind of bring this concept, a purpose, cause, belief, why organizations exist. So let's start with this. Like let's say why organizations exist. So I can create this now as a new train of thought. So organizations exist to have a purpose. They exist to, um, or they uh, have a purpose uh, to serve um, and solve a problem. Like I'm sort of filling in some gaps. Uh, so now we're thinking, do organizations uh, understand why they exist? Okay, right, let's create that. I like, I like to put the titles in for some reason. I guess when you're in the preview mode, you get a nice big title. Okay, let's, let's start bringing our thinking together. So I'm gonna put like a C also, the golden circle, okay? Um, often, so it's okay to repeat some, some trains of thought because you want this to be um, concise. Often uh, people in organizations uh, know what they do, how they do it, but rarely know why they do it. Okay. Because I'm taking it from a YouTube video, and I'm linking to the golden circle. If there was any research that would um, support that statement, here would be a good place to, to link that in, have a have a note that dedicates just the research so I can reuse it. But I don't have that uh, to hand. Um, okay, so let's look at a, an example. Example. Dell. So um, we have uh, we have uh, can't spell have the best computer with the fastest specs. That's their marketing. That's what they would say. This is the example Simon Sinek gives. Um, let's just have a look here. My my notes. Um, He even refers to it. So, so if you are a marketer, you say, we make great computers. We have the best computer with the fastest specs. Um, so that is the 
the what, the why, oh, sorry, the how, uh, they do it by uh, we uh, build them, uh, uh, we have a high build quality, uh, easy to use, etc. The why, why to make money so that's an example where you're not completing that uh why statement in there but if you look at apple this is the example he gives he flips it he says why uh everything we do we believe in challenging the status quo Whoa, we believe in thinking differently. Okay. Um, the how we make great, what did he say? He says we make uh, uh, it's beautifully designed, can't spell beautifully designed. Does, so does Obsidian on Mac allow me to spell correct? Uh, no, apparently not. Okay, B E A U T I F U. Uh, okay, right. It's it's beautifully designed, easy to use, and then this is the magic. Uh, the what? Uh, we just happen to make great computers, right? This is what he's talking about. So we've got an example. Do un organizations ex um understand why they exist. What I would probably do here now is I'd take that and I'd say, see example, examples of a uh, golden circle. So now I can put that as examples of golden. So you can see now how I've created a, a separate note here. I can use the backlinks to see where I use that. I can go back to there. Um, okay. Uh, then he talks about why this is important. He says that the limbic brain is the bit that sort of processes emotion, but um, doesn't uh, understand language. But when you're selling something in language, then you you can say all the right things, but someone says, "Okay, but my gut doesn't feel right because I don't like I don't feel it." But if you if you sell to the limbic brain. When the language part of the brain kicks in, it's just justifying your feeling. Uh, as human beings, we do that all the time. We like to justify the way we feel, um, even if it's illogical. We'll find the words to explain why we do what we do, even if it makes no sense. That's that's what being human is all about. Okay, so in this sense, I would then probably put in a link here. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm just sort of specking out my thinking in, in here and getting a ground and then I can go through and tidy things up. Um, why do people buy? Is the... And then we're talking about the uh, people, people um, buy from the emotional response in the, and I can't remember how to spell limbic brain, so I'm just going to refer to my notes. But what I'm going to do here is I'm referring to something that's not a con, it's, like it's, it's a part of uh, limbic brain. Oh, I'll call it limbic brain, right. Um, now, I can now go into here, lim limbic brain. I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. And I would say this is the part of the brain that controls decision making and not, let's put that in bold, not language. Right. I've got something really simple here. It's one idea on a card that I, if I ever want to remind myself what, what the limbic brain is and all that. Now I've got my backlinks and I can say, okay, right, I, what, what limbic brain relates to why people buy. So I've now got that relationship here. Notice that I don't need to double explain 
what the limbic brain does, I just need to capture people buy from the emotional response in the limbic brain. Why is that? Because it processes decisions without language, right? Um, and then you say people use the uh, the language, I can't remember the name, of the brain to justify those decisions. And now, so we're talking about why people buy. So we can uh, link this. So I'll put like a C also golden circle. So if I pick up this, like I'm, I'm doing a piece of work about consumer behavior, why people buy, why some companies are uh, valued higher than others, why some people are better sales. Um, I could look at, well, what, what are the triggers that make people buy? And I can say, okay, well, we've got this emotional response and then we can look at the golden circle. We can remind ourselves it's, you know, that, that positioning of why, how, what, and the companies get it wrong. Um, and then like, okay, companies, well, why do they exist? So now you can see that, that linking of everything together. Uh, I won't go into any more detail in this example, but Rather than creating one document which does the whole golden circle, the breakdown, thinking, I've broken it into its component parts that now I can reuse, I can relink them. I've got the Olympic brain, I've got examples. And if I'm now creating a blog post, I can say, right, well, I want to cover this and I want to cover this and I want to cover this. The rest is not quite relevant to the argument or, or the viewpoint I'm putting in that blog post. So it's fine. Okay. Now, just to give an, a, a, a little bit more of a demo here of Obsidian specifically, um, one of the cool things you can do is if you bring in, or if you've built up your body of work, so this is, I've exported my, my work in progress second brain from Flotelic, and if I just drag those in, uh, so you can see I've got a lot of concepts, most of them are sort of placeholder things for me to um, sort of organize my thinking and then start filling it in. Uh, you can view your your second brain in a graph view. So, um, so here we go. I can I can zoom out and I can see my second brain. How cool is that? Um, but the cool thing is, I can start seeing the the areas where you know obviously are most important um, as it builds up. So, thinking books. I've got lots of books on there. Mastery books. Um, I've obviously documented a lot, a lot of the books that I want to cover um, and I believe there's a way to customize some of this to see you can see your tags if you've got tags in there attachments so um, while I'm not sure what, what the the real benefit of this is in terms of productivity and actually achieving things but it is quite nice to remind yourself that that consistency, building up your note taking over time is paying off. Is is you can visualize this in a certain way. You can see um the the topics that are getting most attention in your thinking. And you can sort of you can sort of discover the bits that really do resonate with you, do really interest with you, and sort of lean into that more. And you know, the whole point of taking on a knowledge management system, reading more or learning more is to follow your passions. And when you start out, you may not know what they are and you might discover them through this process. Okay, so uh, let's switch back to where we are in, in the concept of this. I've lost my window again, there we go. Right, okay. So that's an example of how you would use it to create the golden circle. Uh, it was really easy to set, create new notes, link them in, and it was great. Okay, uh, so what can you do with them? What can you do with smart notes? You can use it to organize your blog content and have those those pieces pop, like I said about the popcorn earlier, uh, frequently over time without having to start from scratch. You can use it to catch your ideas and create the references, so it's just easily discoverable uh, and remain in context to other ideas. Um, that you had at that time of discovery because it's also important to remember that your thinking changes over time you know the stoics say uh, you can't read the same book twice because when you read it a second time you are not the same person because your thinking has has evolved you've evolved in that process um 
I like the idea you can use it in a team setting to capture knowledge about maybe how the business works, knowledge management, uh, best practices. Um, and in particular, where I find this quite interesting in a technical sense is creating a playbook for you know, running a production environment. So for Flotelic, if something goes wrong, uh, I want this playbook to be able to answer, like, where do you look? How do you debug it? What who, well, what do you need access to? So as the, as the team grows, you don't have to train everyone from scratch up front before disaster happens. You've got this playbook that should be easy to discover that next step. Um, and you know, the goal for me is to reduce the barrier to to keeping it up to date and keeping it consistent. So yeah, that's like some of the things you can do with smart notes. And okay, well, I've pretty much covered an awful lot. I've covered the Zettelcast and smart notes, how you can use Obsidian. Um, uh, you've seen some of the workflow that I have in Flotelic. So what are your next steps? If you really want to get into this, if you want to take this to the next level, you want to read the book Smart Notes by Sonke Arns. I apologize if I've pronounced that wrong. Um, it took me about halfway through this book for it to click. Uh, because I understood the concept of linking, fleeting notes, literature notes, but what was the light bulb moment was that each note is such an incrementally small piece of insight. Smaller the better in a way because you can reuse it more and it's those connections. And then you ask your your smart note system questions that you want to answer. And that's how learning happens. Other people would probably use like a mind mapping tool where they start and they start branching out. But how do you go from... Like I've tried this where you link one leaf to another leaf because they are related and it gets really messy. Um, it's a graph, graph view. Things connect in very different ways. You want to explore videos on YouTube, uh, subscribe to, to my YouTube channel because I will be producing more stuff on this. Uh, but there's certainly other, uh, other YouTubers who are talking about this. Um, do reach out in the comments of what you're looking for to help me sort of maybe help you. Um, in that sense, maybe I produce more content in areas that you want to dive into. And of course, you want to sign up to Flotelic. And how do you do that? That leads me to my final part uh, of the Flotelic sponsor segment. It's weird sponsoring your own video with your own product. But um, but honestly, do, do do it. Go to join.flotelic.com. And uh, while I'm building the product, while I'm, I'm doing a, a, a a built in public kind of process, follow the journey. Um, you'll get email updates every couple of weeks, thereabouts, of what's new, what's upcoming. Um, my goal is to build a community around people who love smart notes and smart note taking. Um, listen to how this is going to benefit you, essentially, um, and hopefully gradually get this thing launched. I know there's a lot of note taking apps out there, but even just going through this exercise in Obsidian, I can see where Flotelic is more about the cumulative impact, the compounding impact of your thinking, your writing, rather than being efficient in just note taking in its isolation. Um, I think the tool should help you uh, switch off and it helps you through that workflow with, with ease. So yeah, join Flotelic uh, waitlist. That's what you want. Okay, that concludes this video. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. It's been a long one, um, way longer than I thought. But uh, I think we've covered some really interesting topics. We've gone deep on things. We've gone through an example. And uh, hopefully it's shed some light on what the smart notes are, what the Zettelcast system is, uh, to the point that you've now got some actionable knowledge that you can take this and start implementing it yourself. So make sure you give this video a like. Uh, do subscribe and uh, chat in the comments about where you'd like to see this content going next to help you on your journey. Thank you.